Hey, welcome to the shop, Father Mucker. Yeah, I'm wearing it. It's not a Mexican hat. I'm sorry, but I'm uh, I'm this Mexican from Argentina type of deal. But anyways, my uh, my lathe is down, so uh, I bought some flowers for to hang on my shop because you know I'm bored of my skull. So I haven't put anything up. So I thought I'll give you uh, a tour of our garden. So let me flip this out and let's start here. This is uh, Argentinian clementines that we're growing from seed. Got some clematis at the bottom of, uh, excuse me, I'm almost falling. We have some clematis uh, at the bottom, all four corners of the, this like arbors we got last year. Uh, this uh, mystery uh, about I think seven years ago we planted a bunch of citrus seed and then we lost all the tags and we don't know what they are but uh, the day that they fruit or flower I know for sure this is lime because you can smell it but we plant the grapefruit I believe orange lemon and lime so these guys we don't know what they are uh, I just planted a uh, red seedless grape, actually two of them, there's another one that I just put here, and uh, we had one last year, this is the one, and uh, the lady at the shop was telling me to make a video, so we planted one of those uh, red seedless grape, and it was doing great, it had grown but it didn't come back this year. And then I noticed that uh, they come with a, um, like a goop thing at the bottom, like wax, and it had fallen off. So I had this idea that uh, water wasn't coming up. So I used the, uh, the same rubber stuff that we used to seal wood for the, for the lathe. And uh, lo and behold, a couple of days later, here's one. And here's another one. They're kind of late, but at least to survive. So, uh, yeah. This, I believe, are blueberry trees that Kim planted. She's got four of them. This is a navel orange that actually died in my shop. And about four weeks ago decided to come back from the bottom and look at this stupid thing he's trying to make an orange it's got like seven leaves in one little stick and he's trying to make an orange plants are unbelievable uh, I believe this is a rose that didn't come back this one did uh, these are Kim's peppers and I have more uh, Argentinian clementine, I have four of them. Those are, again, peppers. This is a, well, it's a lemon tree that can support lemons, but it's trying to make them anyways. This is a uh, honey fig, I think. Yeah. I'm obviously not the right guy for garden tool, tours, but anyways, Kim has got all kinds of stuff here, and uh, she's the boss. She's going to start her own YouTube channel soon. I'm more of a tree guy. I have a, this is a cherry tree, which believe it or not, is the third cherry tree I buy, because <laughs> the other two were not cherries, they were like uh, those little crab apples. I thought I bought a, a tree that had cherries on it and never read the label. Uh, this is a pear tree. This is, I believe, the broccoli and beans. These are raspberry bushes. Here I have some wood to uh, to wood turn, and look at this guy. He's trying to regrow. Unbelievable! 
and I seal all that's all sealed wood so this is our plant uh, greenhouse love this thing we should have had a little hero can with 100 and something kilometers an hour winds and didn't do nothing to it Kim has got a whole bunch of hot peppers here and I believe some squash that need to go on the ground in the next couple of days uh, this whole row here are tomatoes uh, she has many different kinds and we have this is a clementine tree this fig tree believe it or not is the top of this guy here right here I put a plastic bottle and uh, I shaved it off I put a plastic bottle around it and I put some dirt and I watered it until the root and then I cut it and uh, and one season it become almost as big as the uh, as the father I guess this is a naval orange tree that I shipped from Spain because I'm a nutcase and here we have some garlic and I believe these are onions and Kim has got all kinds of letters here and I how many watermelons have we planted, Kim? Yep. How many? Twelve. Twelve watermelons that are actually going to grow up and we have to hold them up with t-shirts. We did it last year. It was a lot of fun. Um, this is another row of tomatoes. I have no idea what she has there because I'm wearing glasses to see clothes and I can't read those things. Here we have another fig that has, it had a shitload of strawberries, but the robin keeps coming and stealing them. Got a little prick, but this is all strawberries. Kim is making some uh, hanging baskets to go in this corner and the other corner over there. These are bell peppers, for what I can see. And yeah, I'm growing some winter tires too. And these are clementines, lemon, lemon, and ruby oranges, which I'm gonna give away. Um, well, this is. Ah, this just appear here. This is uh, oh, it's a cherry tomato for our neighbor. This is called Juan Peron. No, just Peron. Peron. El Presidente. El Presidente. <laughs> this is a tomato plant from Argentina. We planted a bunch. Only one survived, but uh, it's doing great. And uh, what are this? Came this cabbage? Cabbage. Yeah, you can. Two tomato plants and strawberry patch. As you can see, I'm so knowledgeable. But so, moving on. This is a uh, red apple, like regular. This is a uh, Chicago hardy fig. Honeysuckle. And that's a weed that looks nice, so we're keeping it. <laughs> this, I believe, there's some squash that Kim is growing here, which is gonna make it so much fun when I cut the grass. Um, we got potatoes here. This is a grafted pear that uh, makes three different kinds of pears. Uh, we only got like five or six last year because it's a small tree we kind of remove them so the tree can grow um, 
um, these are more potatoes this is a red delicious apple tree and it had like seven apples last year for the first time they were amazing and these are potato towers Kim has got going we'll probably make a video at the end of the season when, uh, when we harvest this and we're trying to learn how to uh, yeah I think my lawn more needs water and it's kind of yellowing uh, we're trying to learn how to cool this off it works great at the beginning of the season but right now it's like 40 something degrees in there so uh, I don't know the solution maybe to put nothing but anyway so it's, uh, just sharing a bit of uh, our life in our garden with you uh, we set this up we started well when we moved in here three years ago I, I, I made this bed and uh, last year I bought this these things are great if you grow stuff uh, they're called kettle panels unlike like we bought this th these are from Home Depot these are like uh, four by eight or like three and a half by seven they're they're meant for like when you pour concrete when you're gonna pour concrete you put them inside for strength and they're great for this now if you see the thickness of this metal compared to this one is much much thicker and so these guys are kind of made in the same shape like six by six squares um, but these are 56 inches wide each one of them by 16 feet which means that you can just turn like literally you can make a greenhouse in like minutes um, there are the joints that are just held with like zip ties right here and um, they cost me about 60 bucks a piece I mean because they're 16 feet long uh, we had to go to a farm supply to get them but we uh, we rented a cute van and we bought a shitload of this and uh, a bunch of straw that we needed uh, which apparently this year is hard to come by but that's it this is our Lanai apparently is called. I don't know. That's what I wanted. We built it last year. And uh, this year, if everything goes well, I'm going to put a 8x12 shed here, which is going to have a door facing the outside and one from the inside. Uh, I want to make a deck in front of my shop. <coughs> um, about eight feet or I don't know somewhere to where the bottom of the ladder is here and I think I want to put a bit of a roof here with some posts just to store wood underneath and so the mini split doesn't get so much snow I mean it worked fine uh, through the winter it is slowed down and it worked harder than it should but it never I had heat I have a separate heater just in case and uh, we didn't have to use it which I think that I might remove it because uh, Lagunas uh, was kind enough to uh, let me and instead of getting a replacement for my for my late uh, they're allowing me to step up to uh, this is a a 1216 or 1612 and they're allowing me to they're taking this one back giving me a, a refund for everything and I paid the difference and I'll take an 1836 and I had the choice of 110 and 220 and I believe that half the problem with this was me being too aggressive so I thought I'll go for the 220 but I don't have 220 power here having said that this heater here runs in 220 and I had no need to use it so I think I'm gonna get an electrician to remove it put an outlet and then 
keep the heater and put a plug on it so I could either put plug the heater in, in the winter when I'm not here just in case the uh, mini split screws up and uh, when I want to use the late I have to tweet it out. If not I might just run a whole new line anyways there's a whole panel here with 100 amps so anyways that's it that's what's going on uh, I really miss my late Oh, and I got all uh, I got all my tools lay out here. I sharpened them all because again I'm bored. But I was trying to design some kind of uh, rack to go on that wall. But then you know you start with ideas, and I thought I want to move the bandsaw a bit over, but that thing is on the shelf is in the way. So then I'm thinking about removing the shelf and putting it there. And then build something that are shorter, and that allows me to bring, uh, remove the sander, and move over the uh, the two band saws because uh, the footprint for my new lathe is a lot bigger. And that's it. So I thank you for being here and sharing some time with us, and we'll catch up with you soon.